Hey guys, it is t totally a joy um, to be with you today. Uh, this sermon is called Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you just give me an extra dose of your presence, God. I pray, Lord God, that you will just permeate the atmosphere with an extra dose of your spirit. Let every word that fall that falls from my mouth today be from you, Father, and I pray, Lord God, that you will just speak to me and speak through me. Touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every soul, and every spirit in the name of Jesus. Hey guys, I hope I hope you're doing well today. I'm a little tired, but I'm still doing well. Um, it's the thing about being a creative. Most people stay up at night and they worry about stuff like bills and whatever. But there's there's some of that too. But mostly, when I'm up at like two or three o'clock in the morning, I'm getting creative ideas and uh, songs and movies and plays and vision. That's what's got me going up at night. So pray for me, <laughs> um, because it's my favorite night part of the day to dream the wee hours of the morning. The dreaming hours, I call it. Um, that that can be a sermon <laughs> sometime called the dreaming hours. The hours that the hours that are quiet and you just um you just uh get visions or snatches or dreams of um, what your purpose is to be or what the enhances of your purpose are. And we all need uh, dreaming hours. And then we need to put those dreams into action. So that's what I'm uh, planning to do this year. Anyway. My actual sermon is called, um, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. It came about because, um, I was in church last week again, and the pastor was talking about, um, the, uh, having the, the real thing. Um, in, instead of just a fake thing with God, instead of an authentic relationship, I should say. And when he was talking, because Pastor Stephen of Elevation Church, he loves to tell stories when he's preaching. So do I, but he's famous for them. So he was, um, talking from Ephesians again and he was um, he told a story of how when he was a little boy he was in a place that traded uh, sports cards remember those sports cards either basketball or baseball or whatever and then you could get money for the card depending on how valuable it was so, so this, this guy had come up to him, he was about like, what I think, nine or ten at the time, and uh, this guy managed to manipulate him into giving up his Michael Jordan uh, basketball card, and for some, for something else, and he, he told his mom that look what I got, that and he showed up whatever thing he got, and then, and then 
he told he told uh, his mom this guy um this guy gave it gave it to me for one of my baseball cards his mom says which one um and he said oh my michael jordan card <laughs> so his mother went back into the store probably got the money back because she knew how how valuable that card was so i was i was watching this and you know me and my music brain uh he's um, and he was talking about, do you, do you want a real relationship with God, or, um, he says, um, the authentic you that God created, or, uh, he started talking about the new you, the, the, the you that God knew, and plus, the, the you that is new in Christ. Do you want to be that you were? How, how was Christians we need to be that person? The one that God created or, or the one that God knows. Anyway, so I was sitting there and thinking, um, like, and this, and it's strange because Oftentimes when I'm in church, the strangest songs come to my head. So, um, I started singing. He said something about the real thing, and I was like, and I started singing. Ain't nothing like the thing, baby. Ain't nothing. So let me get the real thing, baby. So let me get the real Um, so I was singing that and I was like, oh my gosh, what a sermon title. And then I, and then out of, out of, I was listening to the radio because I'm so, such a, um, music hog, so I was listening to CHFI, a, radio, a local radio station here, and they were playing What About Us by Pink, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, a preacher needs to take this song apart and answer those questions. Um, it says, um, that she asked him what about us and i'm like oh my gosh what a sermon i can put these two together so that's what i'm gonna try and do today <laughs> so i'm gonna mix a pink song with a tammy T terrell and marvin gay song and add a little script to it and see what we get <laughs> um pray for me um I think the world has such um, a messed up view of Christians that um, I think that they, they don't know the realness of Jesus or they have no idea how it feels to walk with Jesus. Um, for for them they think that jesus is another religion but it's like the greatest relationship you could have ever been in in your life and i think i think when, when i think we need to show the world what it is like to have a real encounter with jesus um how how the walk is daily and it's wonderful and it's complicated and it can be and it is distressing at times 
it go, go through ups and downs and, you know, pain, but through it all, you know you have somebody there who will never leave you, never forsake you, never let you down. And even if you feel, if you feel like he's letting you down, he isn't. He's working his perfect wheel, will um, to enhance and improve his purpose. And I think, um, I, th I wish I could convey to the world what a real relationship with Jesus is like. It's not, it goes past reading a bunch of scriptures it goes past even praying. It's a daily um, conversation. Um, <laughs> um, people always say you need time with the Lord. You need your quiet time. But for myself, I just like every minute for me is time with the Lord. Um, even when I'm out somewhere, even when I'm doing something, he's there, I can feel him. So all I need to do is start talking. So when I'm waiting for, let's say, the bus, and it is just totally crazy, um, and people are like saying, passing, Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And I'm waiting in the building for real friends. I, I might say to the Lord, God, this is just crazy. I'm going to be late for my appointment. And I'll, I'll hear him say, calm down. So I'll be there soon. And I'm like, but I'm going to be late. He'll be like, calm down. <laughs> They'll be there soon. You won't be late. And sure enough, they show up. Or I may be um, on Netflix looking for a show to watch. And it, he'll be like, hey, I think you'll like that show. But I'm like, Lord, I want to watch this show. He'll be like, I think you'll like that show better. And I'll be like, okay, we'll go with your pick. And I will love that show. And it's like, um, and as you, as many of you know, I'm single. So sometimes that's hard. And, and it's not only, uh, the lack of sex, because God knows that's getting harder and harder the older I get. But, um, like, the lack of uh, getting someone to help with, like, little things. Like, because I have vision problems, so walking to the store is sometimes tough, and it's all the time tough. And yes, I do have people around me. I do have staff here that if I give them money and if they have the time, they can do that. Or if I if I need something, I can call my sister and whatever, and and she try and do her best to get whatever. And and my brother-in-law and my other sister, I do have help. But sometimes it's just like. The bur like the burden of just living, the way I do is so heavy. So sometimes I, uh, they'll say a little thing needs to be fixed, and I'm like, if I had someone here, that would I could just ask them to do it or them to write it up or whatever. Or I can ask them to help me with that and I don't have to um, get my sister to come from so far to just do that little thing and whatever. So, sometimes with life, with all our lives, 
it got so heavy and the Lord saying in those little overwhelming things I'm there and he will say to me don't worry this won't last forever and yes you will have that husband you will have those children either adopted or uh, you will have them biologically don't worry this too shall pass it's teaching you something so that kind of relationship it keeps me going knowing that i'm not alone although sometimes i may feel alone sometimes it may get tough and sometimes it just um, it just is tough and he wants like a real relationship with you so he can comfort you when things are going, going awry or even just if you're having a great day, um, you can say, look, I got that job or look, I'm pregnant or whatever. You can... He wants to rejoice with you. He wants to celebrate with you. He wants to cry with you. He wants to be a partner in your life. And it is the most realest thing ever. So me, there's no such thing as time with the Lord. Because every moment of every day, he comforts me. He's with me. He's going through it with me when I can't do a certain thing. He provides and he makes me find stuff that I need, need to find. And he, he says to call that person and he gives me the strength because I'm kind of timid to ask for what I need. And he's uh, changing me and growing me and all of that stuff. It's like having a constant um, friend with you at all times. It's just so amazing. And life is not amazing at times. But in those times where it's not amazing, he's right there. He's right there holding you. He's right there hugging you. He's right there to be your cheerleader. Um, and in life, it teaches you stuff. Like, it teaches you stuff. And the lessons that you learn is, are so awesome. And I think that, um, he wants a real relationship with people. And he, there, there's, there's nothing like the real thing. No drug, no sex partner, either man or woman or both or whatever. No, no shopping addiction, no nothing, no Netflix binge can offer you what he can. Uh, despite the thing about, and there's the thing too about heaven and eternal life or whatever. That is an awesome bonus too, but I'm talking about the practical bonuses that um, he has for his children. And I think that um, we've done a disservice to say that God will give me whatever I want or whatever. No, he'll walk with you through your life. He can give you solutions, give you answers when you need them. He can give you strength or ch cheer you on when you need it. He can give you answers of who to call. Or he can work through people to give you, a, give you resources. And he, he just wants to share life with you. And I think um, when you just focus on Sunday morning, you miss the benefits. Like, if you just, like, have a two-second prayer in the, you know, the day, and you're just kind of, you, you read 
the Bible for 10, for however many minutes. It's a wonderful practice, but he wants more. He wants a daily, daily walk with you. He wants to help you pick out what to have with your children, you know. He wants to be in that grocery line with you to say, do I get the bacon or do I get the, the cereal or whatever. He wants, when you're having health challenges, he wants to minister to you about how to, to, um, um, through your health challenges. As I said before, many times I have diabetes and a lot of times um, I'm just struggling like, should I eat this or should I eat that? And he'd be like, and he'd, sh and he'd show me what I could change in my diet. It's so cool. So. He not only give me visions for my future, which he does at night, but he gives me practical visions of things I could do, ways I can fit the diabetes thing into my lifestyle. And that it is just so amazing um, to walk with him like that, to talk with him like that to get his comfort and his strength and his, come on girl, you can do it. You know, just, yeah, you know, when, when bad things come, he can stick close to me, you know, and he sends the right people when I need them. Um, and each of our relationships with God are different, but it's the real thing. And when you got the real thing, you know it. Because um, a lot of people, I'm single, but a lot of people who found real, genuine, uh, romantic love can tell you there, there's nothing like the real thing. Somebody to stand by your side somebody to be there, somebody to, um, you can be you with or whatever. They'll say, I've had a lot of frogs before I found my prince because it's the real things thing. And there's a lot of fake things out there, but the Lord wants to be the real thing to you. He just doesn't want to be a Sunday thing. He just doesn't want to be a five minute prayer in the morning or read scripture for 10 minutes. If that's a practice you have, great. But he wants to, great start, but he wants to be all up in your business every second hour of the day. Like he wants time with him to be every day. He wants to be the voice in that meeting that will say, um, try this product or say this or do this. Um, I was asked to do, to do something for the organization in which I lived. And he gave me the idea. The person asked me to write something about how the organization has positively affected my life, affected my life. And the per, uh, the person asked me to write something, and he said, "You know what? Do a video." And and I swear, guys, sorry, I I know that every word on that video came from God. Now it was not a Christian video. It was not a sermon. And then when I was finished with that video and I sent it to the management where I lived, they were so grateful. And not only that, the, the video was um, shared with the board as the original, but now they're using it for, for other things throughout the organization because it was so good because it was totally 
God guided the things that I said for the organization were totally from God with, without it being anything. I just literally sat in my um, computer, in front of my computer, turned the video camera on, much like what I'm doing now. And he just filled my mouth with whatever I needed. So, and it came from that daily relationship that he wants to have with us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to help us raise our children. He wants us, he wants to help us with our marriages. He wants us to, um, he wants to help us with our families, you know. He wants to be all up in our business and, um, uh, for, for that, um, and he wants us to do it today. And for, for that pink song, um, it, it asks a lot about people. And it says, um, what, what about us? What about all the times you said you had the answers? What about us? What about all, all the um, broken happy ever afters? What about trust? What about all the dreams that ended in disaster? Um, and for all of that, it's like I, the Lord has called me to say to all the people that um, have had false hope and false teachers and them not show God to you or them try to beat you over the head or get money out of you or judge you or whatever. God wants me to say two things. God wants me to say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that stupid people tried to manipulate you and do some stupid stuff that they weren't supposed to do. And that they tried to get money out of you, that they were being unfair to you, that they were judging you, that they kicked you out of church, that, that you felt hurt and ashamed and misled and thought this whole Christian thing was a bunch of crap and he wants me to say to you, I'm sorry. He says to you through me, I'm sorry. And that wasn't me. He said, they used my name, but it wasn't me. It was fraudulent people that were, that were using my name, but it wasn't me. They were using, they twisted my words for their own selfish gain. And he's like, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't um, mean to do that. And he's like, I'm sorry. I know that life sucks. I know that we promised you, like, just come to Jesus and it's going to be so much better. Um, sometimes it isn't, it isn't so much better. Sometimes it gets a lot worse when you come to Jesus. But in the worstness, you have someone to walk with you through that. You have someone to teach you the lessons and you'll come out the other side and yeah, life sucks, but, but Jesus makes it so much better. Like, there's a light, like things can be going on around you. But when you have Jesus, it's like the light just overshadows the darkness. And yeah, there's still dark stuff going on in the world. There's still crazy stuff going on in the world and judgmental stuff going on in the world. But Jesus loves you so much. 
And all of that is still there, but he, he doesn't take it all away, but he gives you the ability to walk in it and gain power and gain strength and gain lessons and gain everything. And basically, to know Jesus is to know who you are. When you have a deep relationship with Jesus, you get to understand who you are and whose you are. Because it says in Genesis, it says, um, the Lord breathed into man and and made him a living soul. Um, it, in all the days of creation, we are the only species that he made in his own image, that he made with his own hand and just breathed into his life. Uh, just breathed into us his life and could you imagine that the god of the universe the god that made any everything breathed into you his life it's so amazing to think about it really is and he wants me to tell you that he's sorry for everything that you've gone through. He's sorry for all the deaths that he that you've gone through. Every divorce that you've gone through. Every horrible thing that you've gone through. And he rejoices through, for all the happy things you've experienced in your life. Uh, for that new relationship, for that job. He, he rejoices in that. And yes, um, Will he ask you to change some stuff? Probably, but he'll do it at your pace. You know, the problem with people is they expect, expect uh, Jesus to change lives immediately. And if it's not done immediately, he's not doing it. But the process is where the strength comes. It's where the healing c comes. And I know it's hard to thank God for everything. Sometimes it's hard to thank God in it, everything. But just know that the process is perfecting you. The process that going through, going through things without Jesus, it may seem hopeless. But going through uh, struggles with Jesus will give you strategy. And going through your struggles with, with Jesus will give you a new sense of perspective. See, the Lord knows you and he knows how to shift your perspective. And he's saying, you're saying, what about this? What about that? He's saying that I'm sorry that that happened to you. He said, I just want to love on you. I just want to show you how great you are and how wonderful I think you are and how, and how badass I think you are. And yes, I did say, I did say that word because he does. He thinks you're absolutely awesome absolutely amazing and you don't see the goodness in you because you don't have him to show you when you think you're so awful he shows you he encourages you he he sends people to love on you so if you're having a crisis today and if you need love in your life uh go to jesus and and there's no, like, way to really, um, no specific way to come to Jesus. Just be honest with him 
Uh, tell him what's in your heart, what you're feeling. Tell him what's in your spirit. And a lot of people, a lot of people say, say the sinner's prayer. I don't do that. I just say to the person, just say what's in your heart. I, I refuse to say what's in your heart because I'm not you. I don't need what you need. You don't need what I need. And at this moment, God doesn't want to hear my voice on your behalf. God wants to hear your voice, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're crying out for, speak it to him. And, and you can contact me on Facebook or wherever you're watching this, Facebook or YouTube, if you need any more help. Um, and that's it. So just... There are no right words to say. There are no, there's no magic. So if you're struggling and you don't know, and if you said, um, what, what she's saying is sounding so good. What, but how can I trust it? People have treated me crappy in the past and I don't know, but just take one step one try. You've tried everything else. You've tried every partner. You've tried shopping. You've tried Netflix. You've tried everything else. So why not try this? And I'm telling you, he will surprise you. He'll give you more love and more grace and more respect than you've ever had in your life. And I'm not saying your life will be, oh, just perfect, that, uh, but if you do it, but I'm saying you won't have to bear it alone. You won't have to bear it by yourself. And I'm just saying to, uh, to forgive the people that didn't know what they're doing. Forgive the people in the church that just screwed everything up for you. They're just people. They're learning just like we uh, we all are. And sometimes uh, church people can be a bit embarrassed, embarrassed to say, I'm learning too. But this is the way I know how. But some, sometimes when we know how, uh, we don't know how, but we pretend we do because we don't want to look stupid. A lot of people in the church just say stuff because they don't want to look stupid and they don't want to, uh, they're embarrassed to say, I don't know. So they, they say stuff and do stuff um, that are totally wrong. And sometimes pastors um, wrongly manipulate people to get them to do what they want to do, like, like get them to give them money and manipulate uh, the tithing thing or whatever, which is totally scriptural, but they manipulate it to get other people's money, forgive them for it. They were, it, they were idiots, and I'm sorry for the way they treated you, treated you but that's not God. God is a God of love and a God of grace. And yes, he does, does discipline, but he does it in a way that you can understand, in a way that you need, in a loving and gentle way, in a way that you can receive it, not in a harsh way. Um, he does it in, in accordance to your personality, in accordance that he's teaching you. And everything that the Lord does is for good. And he's saying, you're asking what about us? What about the misfits? What about the people who don't fit in? He's like, I love you. I didn't create, create, create you to fit in. I created you because you're my beautiful child. You're my beautiful son. You're my beautiful daughter. 
And I just want to love you. I just want to wrap my arms around you today. I just want you to say yes to me and realize that you don't have to do it alone. Just being with us today and showing us who you really are. Thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you, Lord, for your, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, that you have just died for us. Thank you, Lord, that you love us the way you do. In the name of Jesus, amen. He sees you. He loves you. You're so important to him. And for all those people who don't feel important, you are. You are. And come to Jesus so he will show you how special you are, how wonderful you are, how great you are. And even if you've made some mistakes, even if you've made some people mad or upset or furious at you, um, he loves you and, and there is nothing that you've done that he can't forgive. There's a lot that you've done that people can't forgive and people's um, patience have run out because we, we have very short fuses, but with God, like, there is nothing that you have done that he won't be able to forgive you for. He just wants to love on you. And yes, correction in your life will come in time, but it'll be filled with so much love and so much grace that probably you won't even feel it as correction. However, he manages to do it. And he, know that being a Christian is not easy. It's a daily laying down of your wants and your desires. And he will use those things that you think are garbage and turn them into gold. And he's famous for that. And he wants me to say that he loves you so much and he sees you and he notices you, and for all the people who feel unnoticed, unseen, and unloved, the, the Lord says, you are, you are, he sees you, he sees the night you cried, he sees the people that left you, he sees that, that no good husband or wife that cheated on you, he sees that partner after partner, male and female, have disappointed you and just just um, treated you poorly. He sees all that and he wants to cover all that. He wants to surround you in love and his grace. And like I said before, there is nothing that you've done that he can't forgive. Lord, I thank you for your, your lovely people, and I pray that you minister to them and love them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, see you next week. Bye.